The purpose is to awaken from the dream. And the dream of bodies is just a shadow of the dream of guilt that's in the mind. We have to be motivated. Right? All right. If Jesus is our teacher, then he shares the challenge that any teacher has, which is to motivate his or her pupils. They have to want to learn the courses that they're teaching. Well, the only way Jesus will get us to really learn this course is to realize how unhappy we are where we are. If we believe everything is wonderful, we start the course for six months, we get the idea so, so we think we go off you know, happily riding into the sunset, we will not be motivated to really study this, study it as a text and practice it day in and day out. You know, first with the workbook and then after the, the year to just practice it for, for the rest of our lives, all our, our unforgivenesses, day in and day out. We have to be motivated by realizing our life does not work. So that's why there are all these passages here. The descent into hell follows step by step in an inevitable course once the decision that guilt is real has been made. All right, this is what he talks about in the course as the mad course into insanity. This is what he also refers to as the ladder that separation led us down. You know, if you look on your chart, you begin at the top with God that you believe you have left. Then you have a decision-making part of your mind that makes the wrong choice, or seeks to obliterate the Holy Spirit. So now our self is, is no longer a capital S self, is no longer e even a decision-making self, it's now is an ego self, little and tiny, pretending in its grandiosity to be something important. And from that, we, we descend finally into the level of the world. That's what he's talking about. And this is inevitable once you make guilt real. Because guilt demands punishment, we'll be afraid of the punishment, and this demands that we leave the mind to flee from God's wrath and make up a world. And this is not something that happened once in time. This happens over and over again. Each and every instant, as the Course says, there's a, that wonderful section, The Little Hindrance, in chapter 26 of the text that says, Every day and every, every hour and every minute that each hour holds you, but relive the time when terror took the place of love. We, we reenact that moment when we told the Holy Spirit to get lost, and we, and we listen to the ego instead. And we do this over and over again, outside of time. But we experience its effects within time. But the problem is outside of time, which means the healing has to be outside of time. That's what the holy instant is. It's that, it's that instant outside of time and space when we choose the Holy Spirit instead of the ego. Sickness and death and misery now stalk the earth in unrelenting waves, sometimes together and sometimes in grim succession. All right, this is Jesus' portrayal of the world. It's not the only place in the material where he does this. Right. And he's trying to help us realize this is not a nice place. As he says in the workbook, it's a desert where starved and thirsty creatures come to die. And this, that's not the only place he uses the image of a desert either. If there's no life in a desert, there's no life here. Because he tells us there's no life outside of heaven. So the point of all this is not to kind of badger us and not to make us feel guilty, but to have, to have us become motivated that we really want to leave this desert, that we don't want to stay in a place where again, where starved and thirsty creatures come to die. Right? So that's the bad news in terms of the world that we think is so real and so, and so wonderful. And the good news is yet all these things, however real they seem, are but illusions. Right? Now the problem with that statement, and with so many other statements, is if I accept what he's saying here, that, that all these things, sickness, death, and misery are illusions, I must also accept the fact that this body is an illusion too. That's the problem. Once again, that's why no one really likes this course. Jesus ultimately is not just saying give up your grievances, give up all your unforgiveness, give up all your petty hates, give up all your specialness. It's true he's saying all that. But he's saying all that as the stepping stones towards eventually giving up this entire self. His purpose is not to have us live more happily in the dream, in which all sickness is eradicated and death is eradicated and people live on and on and on and everybody's happy. If you think this world works 
or can work, or, or the Course came into this world to make the world a better place and to bring peace and prosperity and happiness into the world, you will never be motivated to learn it. The purpose of this Course is to help you leave the world voluntarily. Just as the ego had to convince us right at the beginning to leave the mind, and it did this by telling us, it lied, but it told us and we believed it, that the mind was a very dangerous place. So it gave us a motivation by making up this very tall tale of sin, guilt, and fear, it gave us the, the motivation to leave the mind by our believing if we stayed in the mind, we would be most unhappy. Because this raging, maniacal, insane God would wreak vengeance on us and destroy us. So the ego was a very good teacher. Insane, but very good teacher. It knew it had to motivate us. So it motivated us to leave the mind and make up a world by teaching us the mind would make us very unhappy. Well, Jesus does the very same thing, except his lesson is sane. He now has to motivate us to undo the ego's motivation. He has to teach us staying in the body, in the world, will kill us and make us very, very unhappy. And returning to the mind will bring us real joy. The problem is we still believe the ego. So we're still motivated to flee our mind and live in the world, and the ego says, okay, we're here, now let's make it a better place. This course is not, does not have as, as its purpose to make the world a better place. Unlike the Bible, it does not seek to make a new Jerusalem here on earth. It does not seek to blend together heaven and earth and bring heaven on earth. You can't integrate two mutually exclusive realms, heaven and earth. So Jesus has to motivate us to look again at this world and the body. That's where you have all these passages and all the material, text, workbook, manual, the two pamphlets, the Helen's poems, and all the, all the stuff. But we are so tempted to set that aside and say, well, he doesn't really mean it that way. He just means the way we perceive the world is, is wrong. Wrong. He doesn't mean that. The world is wrong because it was made to be a defense against what is right, which is the atonement principle in our mind. You must understand that otherwise your work with this course will be very severely limited. You can put a very tight band around it. So it will only say what you want it to say, which is how I can live better in this world than in this body. I want to feel better in this body. Jesus is telling you, you can't feel better in a body. There is no body. But let me help you feel better in the mind by teaching you that the ego lied to you. The mind is not a dangerous place. There is no wrathful, venomous God hell-bent on destroying you. There is no sinful, guilty, vicious, evil person named you in your mind. The whole thing is made up. The mind is the only thing that could save you because it was the mind that was the only thing that damned you. So, but Jesus has to motivate us. He has to get us to want to learn his course. So again, that's why passages like this are here. So that we won't be tempted to try to drag him into the world and make the world a better place again. Okay, yep, come on. Uh, I'm just thinking, uh, how about lightening up about the failure of the body, not making a big deal out of it? <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I, I'm just reading what's in the book. That's all. I, I'm innocent. One of the reasons I think it is important to be a little serious, uh, why it is important to talk about the body that way, is because most people don't like to talk about it that way. And I think one of the reasons that, in a sense, Jesus takes the gloves off in this course and calls it as it is, is because uh, there, there's such a strong tendency in the world not to understand the ego. And he really wants us to understand it because otherwise we won't be able to make a meaningful choice against it. Uh, now the body in the end is nothing. I mean, that's the lightning of it, uh, that the body is really nothing. Uh, but, but we've made it into something awful because we first made ourselves to be something awful. And we can't understand that the awfulness that we made is nothing until we first look at the awfulness. You know, the, the Course says uh, that, that you must look at the, at the hate. He says it in a number of places, you must look at the hate. Before you could look at the love, you must look at the hate. Not because the hate is real, but because you've made it real and then made the hate so hateful and fearful that you don't want to look at it. And the world then becomes a cover. So it does get better at the end. That's yes. the important thing. All right. <laughs>